Here begins the second half of my PENCAST conversation with Dr. Kunio Mikuria, former Secretary General of the World Customs Organization. Do you have thoughts on the new EU Customs Data Hub and the EU Customs Data Authority that's being rolled out? Do you, what, what potential does that have and potential challenges do you see in reaching its full potential? Well, um, EU's customs reform proposal is an interesting one because um, it tried to uh, respond to the challenge of e-commerce to start with because in the e-commerce, there are so many customs fraud and uh, it is, well, we know that there are many custom frauds, but we don't know what is the magnitude of um, that fraud to start with. And uh, also, um, uh, the problem of getting data from, uh, well, quality data from, um, our, uh, from the private sector, uh, um, traders business uh, uh, is uh, really, um, well, challenge. So this is why EU has um, come up with uh, um, solution to make sure that they get data, but in get data even from um, platforms. But in getting data, they, uh, I think they thought about, uh, uh, well, facilitation side that uh, um, each traders uh, where to, um, well, submit to data. And uh, if this is only one, um, well, data hub, that could be helpful, uh, well, which I understand. But uh, that has, um, as you suggested, uh, um, far reaching uh, um, effect on national customs, uh, 27 national customs. Mm-hmm. And uh, um, so, um, and the, uh, well, uh, how to, well, the, well, concept of EU customs, uh, reform and, uh, their proposed, uh, um, new legislation is, um, fine, but how it would be used, uh, by, um, each national custom administration is something that they have to come up with better because risk management, uh, um, uh, well, I'm sure that uh, EU is providing uh, um, basic risk management, uh, well, tool for risk management, but uh, each port, each port of entry has different, uh, um, well, um, environment and uh, risk uh, environment. Therefore, how to use that, uh, um, well, uh, central hub data to match with their own environment, the customs environment at the entry point would be, well, discussion and uh, how to, well, deliberate more uh, might be necessary. But uh, all in all, he wants to have a data-driven customs. That I agree. And, uh, but uh, quite often, uh, devil is in, uh, well, detail. <laughs> and, uh, um, uh, so I'm, uh, um, looking at uh, how EU custom reform will progress at the, well, not only at the commission, but uh, now it is, uh, well, more on the council, parliament uh, is what, uh, um, I'm interested. And also, um, it is about the implementation of technology. Because in the past, the EU had, um, well, customs code, um, but uh, um, to implement custom code, uh, it is um, information technology and, uh, um, well, um, each customs, national customer administration should invest in their own IT system, which was very costly. So uh, this is why initially when EU custom reform was uh, presented, um, some administrations, uh, well, we invested so much, but, uh, um, overall, um, the platform for, um, investment and the sharing data and intelligence that could uh, help, uh, um, 27 customer administrations. Yes. As you say, the devil is in the details and, uh, we'll see, we'll see how it rolls out, but it's interesting to have your thoughts on the overall on the overall challenges faced. Do you think that the creation of regional data hubs and customs data authorities is the way of the future? Will we see more regional customs authorities in the coming years? Well, um, 
Well, customs, um, well, uh, Holy Grail is always sharing data and uh, how to have access to data. So, how, well, um, whatever scheme, um, if customers has, um, well, access to data, but uh, while at the same time fulfilling the national um, requirement of uh, data protection, that is um, always we are, well, uh, the challenge for global customs community. And uh, um, uh, therefore, I see that uh, some region, some, some customer administration in some regions, they have the scheme of sharing data, but uh, uh, what kind of data and what conditions uh, that uh, differs from region to region. And uh, um, so I'm looking at that. And in the end, of course, um, they could be connected. Uh, they should be connected and WCO should support, facilitate that uh, data sharing um, while uh, fully, um, well, addressing the concern of the private sector. Hmm. Understood. Understood. Um, shifting gears a little bit, I, I'm I'm looking at um, the recent huge disruptions um, in in our world, in our trade, um, in our societies. Wars in the Ukraine and Gaza, the blockage of the Suez Canal, the pandemic, of course. How have these huge disruptions changed the priorities of customs work? Do you think? What lessons have they taught us? Well, um, it's an interesting point, uh, um, because, um, well, um, in 1990s and uh, the first 10 years of 2000, uh, um, it was uh, the era of uh, hyper globalization. And, uh, um, it, it is really how to facilitate trade and uh, looking at, uh, um, well, cost efficiency and uh, um, more, um, well, low cost uh, production place and uh, outsourcing um, has been really, uh, the, well, um, very prevalent uh, um, at that uh, um, stage. And, uh, um, well, that is where um, WCO and uh, um, customs had, well, there was a high expectation and uh, WTO's uh, um, trade facilitation agreement uh, uh, response to that need for um, uh, hyper-globalization. So, uh, because uh, for the globalization outsourcing, um, border should be really um, efficient and low cost. But then, um, uh, first came, in my view, 2001, um, terrorist attacks in the U.S. And uh, um, there was a talk that maybe um, we were pursuing uh, just in time, but uh, just in case uh, might be, in, uh, that requirement might be there. But, uh, well, it didn't happen, as you know. And, uh, um, well, just uh, they continue to, um, well, uh, the globalization. Uh, well, uh, 2001 is also the year that, uh, um well, China has joined the WTO. So, um, all those, uh, um, well, um, um, ad, well, implementation of container IT technology, technological uh, innovation was there and, uh, um, low labor cost country, big one has joined in the global trading system and the WTO system was, um, well, sufficiently robust at that time. But uh, mm -hmm. now, um, as you say, um, there is a kind of paradigm shift. And uh, um, as you said, the trust came, uh, um, it was the, well, um, most uh, uh, well visible was um, pandemic. And uh, um, uh, pandemic caused disruptions, supply chain disruptions. And they noticed that, uh, well, medical supplies uh, the production was concentrated on, on on very few or not one if not one country so how to uh, make sure that uh, those um well um uh, essential goods uh, the production should be 
should have multiple sources. That was one area. And uh, also, um, actually, mm, mm, uh, so, well, disruptions have happened. So if uh, um, the um, source was uh, really disrupted uh, um, in terms of uh, transport, uh, um, global economy had a problem. So this is one side. And another side is that uh, um, geopolitical, um, well, um, consideration, uh, as you know, uh, U.S.-China trade tension uh, really started in 2018. And, uh, um, especially in the high tech area, there was, uh, um, well, um, not, uh, um, just, uh, innocent globalization, but, uh, um, uh, really the shoring or friend shoring, et cetera, that, uh, was there. And then came, um, war in Ukraine and, uh, um, well, um, in Gaza. So, um, those of, uh, the really, um, well, disruptive uh, forces and, uh, um, uh, well, you said the blockage, but, uh, um, sanctions were there and, uh, therefore customs, customs are the implementation agency of uh, sanctions, um, in, in international trade. So, um, they need to, um, well, uh, factor in those, uh, um, uh, new requirements. And, uh, um, so, um, Technology wise, um, well, um, what, uh, well, container and, uh, um, IT system, as I said, there are e-commerce and, uh, um, small parcels, packages coming and uh, also, um, AI and other technology coming in. So what, uh, um, that uh, will bring to the new environment. Already it brought a new environment to customs, new challenges to customs, but what it will, um, uh, well, move forward and how customs can address that issue. Well, EU custom reform is one answer, but um, other um, uh, countries are looking at uh, how to respond to those challenges. And, uh, um, uh, but at the same time, when we look at the globalization, um, well, there are many emerging economies, but uh, um, production factors of uh, um, low labor costs, is, is it still valid? And uh, also, um, well, um, consumption power of new emerging economies, how it will move on. And uh, then finally, that uh, um multilateral um well wto system uh, what is going on uh, therefore um uh, for wco we are trying to look at uh, those uh, um disruptive uh, ones one side is technology and another is in the end as we agreed it is trust at the world well, trading system uh, even if, um, well, high tech area, uh, well, um, it's, uh, um, well, decoupling or the risking, uh, um, customers should really uh, be careful about that. And, uh, um, uh, well, um, also when it comes to, um, well, um, globalization is, um, well, the innocent globalization has finished, but, uh, um, I see increasingly regionalization. And, uh, when it comes to regionalization, um, well, free trade agreement or customs union, customs has been the core and the driving power. And, uh, I can see mega FTA or move towards customer union. So it's all those regional uh, integration. How to make sure that uh, those uh, regional integrations are in compliance with, uh, well, global, well, um, they are not uh, moving towards, uh, um, well, um, uh, diver- well, um, uh, it, it, it moved towards more on supporting in the future. Um, multilateral system. And, uh, um, uh, so this is, uh, um, what the customer should, uh, factor. And, uh, um, so how, um, uh, we can support uh, this movement, uh, um, 
is uh, um, we are looking at. And uh, um, so that is um, what uh, um, custom is in a, um, well, different, uh, um, well, um, more challenge comes, but uh, it would be a uh, well, interesting era for the WCO to um, look at and uh, lead um, custom administration um, uh, in the world. Fostering the combination of technology on the one hand and trust on the other and ensuring that regionalization is a healthy regionalization rather than, 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 uh, protective and exclusive one is those are some, those are indeed some, some big challenges for the WCO and for a lot of other players in the customs world. Um, you know, to take the example of PenCP, which as we've said is funded by the EU uh, Horizon program, what roles should um, internationally funded projects in customs like PenCP be playing in accelerating customs innovation, improving customs intercommunication and cooperation, breaking down the public and private barriers, um, in, instilling, as you say, the trust, um, of the different players at the table. What, what do you think the role of such projects should be? Well, first, uh, um, sharing uh, um well what is happening and including best practices mm-hmm. because um during the covid-19 pandemic what we did was that uh, now communication uh, has become difficult what we should do is that especially vis-a-vis the private sector we have to share what are the procedure of customs what the best practices are there and uh, we published uh, um custom administrations uh, national customer administration's best practices and other customer administration looking at that, they, well, um, share that and they, insp- they are inspired by other customer administration's experience and they do their own custom reform. And also, um, uh, the private sector is, um, thinking and asking for custom administration. So first uh, that, uh, sharing uh, what is happening in the world and what are the best practices is important. And also, um, well, um, I hope that your podcast, podcast is not only limited to interview, well, um, public sector, but the private sector as well and uh, how to, um, well, um, uh, encourage engagement and dialogue between the private sector and the public sector is important. Um, well, I, again, during the pandemic time, I set uh, every week, uh, um, Zoom meeting uh, with the private sector. And, uh, um, uh, well, um, uh, I receive uh, a feedback from our members, the public sector customs, but uh, from the private sector point of view, what are your problems? What uh, problems you encounter? How we can help? And that uh, um, helped a lot uh, in um, coming up with a more um, definition of essential goods like a harmonized system. But uh, also uh, what they pointed out is that uh, it is the lack of uh, um, strategic coordination at borders that's a problem. It's not only customs, because uh, at the borders, there are many other agencies. So this is why I started to talk to, um, well, trade, transport, and other um, international organizations uh, to issue joint letter, joint statement to ensure that uh, this is the important area uh, that uh, we need to enhance collaboration to um, uh, to overcome those challenges. So uh, that kind of... Um, Dialogue uh, is very much needed, um, and uh, um, well, um, sharing knowledge and uh, um, well, uh, instilling uh, uh, that dialogue, and also what is important is that uh, um, well, provide a basis for professional pride for um, um, for customs and other well uh, people in other sectors. Uh, that uh, their voice are heard and uh, they are given the opportunity to uh, explain uh, what they are doing and how uh, they can uh, help. So um, 
communication is so important. So I look forward to your further contribution、uh, in this area. To, to clarify, this podcast is indeed Uh, involving the private sector as well as the public.、Uh, and, and I'm speaking with university researchers, private tech、uh, entrepreneurs, and startup companies, and so on. But yes, that, that,、uh, that enhancing professional pride and ensuring that all voices are heard is, th- those are, yeah, critical parts to,、uh, to making everyone sit down at the table and, and, and、uh, share information、uh, productively. Just getting people in the same room uh, um, uh, virtually or in reality is, is a valuable first step. Um, you know, this is, this is a conversation that has been an incredible education for me. Um, and I think for, for our listeners as well, your, your experience is really comes through and, and your analysis of what you've seen. Um, to, to begin to wrap up our conversation, looking back over your long and distinguished career at the WCO, first as deputy, deputy secretary general, and then for three terms as secretary general, what do you feel have been your biggest achievements? Uh, while at the WCO, what, what have been the biggest surprises and what have been the biggest disappointments or regrets, things you wish you had done or done more of? Well,、um, first,、um, I try to、um, make、um, visibility of customs or、um, understanding of customs because customs often people don't understand what we are doing. Ah, customs, those are the people at the airport and,、uh, were searching,、uh, um, our baggages. But,、uh, um, so,、uh, this is a typical view on customs. So,、uh, I try to, um, raise、uh, the visibility of customs. And,、uh, um, the first,、uh, um, five years, I try to, um, to, um, come up with a vision. Uh, that is borders divide customer connects. That is what we are doing. And for that,、uh, um, what tools we have, we came up with, uh, um, uh, revenue package because,、um, when I became secretary general, um, it was amid the global financial crisis and decreasing、uh, customer revenue. And、uh, then, um, well, um, economic competitiveness package because customers can contribute to competitiveness. Uh, through trade facilitation and uh, then uh, compliance package to make sure that、uh, customs role is protecting society. And、uh, so,、uh, and of course, for that,、uh, we need uh, um, uh, organizational development package is necessary. So、uh, with that,、uh, we made clear that、uh, what are the customs、uh, function, mission and vision. And, uh, um, fortunately, many customs administrations, many members appreciate that. And、uh, they took、uh, WCO's vision into their own national vision and missions. So that was uh, what uh, I am proud of. And uh, then um, uh, another area is that、uh, customs are implementation agency of any government policies. And、therefore,、um, they should remain agile and uh, um, responsive to all the changing environment.、Uh, so every year we try to see what are the problems. Is it uh, um, well um, a natural disaster, or well, of course health cri- health crisis was the the recent one. Uh, but also、um, now the world is moving towards more green, sustainable. And how customer can contribute to this sustainability. That kind of, well,、um, mindset to, that、uh, we are at the forefront of、uh, implementing government policies. So we have the tools and we have the willingness to respond. So,、um, to the global issues. That, and, well, this will also、um, raise the visibility of customs. Uh, and uh, also,、um, inclusiveness is very important. Therefore,、mm-hmm. um, well, capacity building activities in general, but I also launched uh, uh, more on landlocked countries, programs for landlocked countries or small island economies to make sure that、uh, inclusive approach for our members is necessary. So those are the, well, Areas and, uh, um, that, uh, WCO, um, achieved. 
And uh, also, as top salesman of WCO, I visit uh, 168 members among 185 and wow. talk to political leaders, more economic leaders as well, to um, advocate why customs is important, why it is important to invest in customs and what custom can do to your country. And uh, um, so um, at the um, top political level and economic level, that dialogue was also what uh, um, I am proud of. Well, um, what can... Um, do I regret anything? No, 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 I don't regret anything, but uh, um, uh, we have to continue this um, and this journey uh, for the customs community. And uh, um, I'm confident that uh, um, the well, next generation of WCO leadership and members, and they are very uh, keen on moving forward and uh, look back uh, with the pride uh, of what they have achieved. 168 visits out of a, hundred, a total of 185 members. That That is an impressive record. Uh, your air miles accounts must be robust at this point. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, um, air miles, um, um, often people ask uh, um, how many uh, rounds of the earth uh, I did, but uh, I always try not to think about that, uh, how long I, well, traveled or accumulated because, um, the, I really wanted to concentrate on, um, our individual members' needs and, um, well, advocacy. So, uh, uh, that is what uh, I uh, I think, uh, um, honestly, um, my feeling. Well, your your contribution to that job and your dedication to getting the word out and being an in person advocate and and diplomat for um, world customs is is impressive. And obviously, that's the uh, you know people around the world are grateful to you for 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 that work. Um, what's you know you've contributed so much to customs, but you have so much more to contribute in your analysis and your uh, historical view of of customs development and innovation. What's next for you? What are your upcoming projects? Well, um, up to December 31st, I had been running, running, and uh, so I didn't have really time to think uh, um, the next step, and uh, uh, I thought that I shouldn't think about that, because then I can't focus on my current job. And January, it was really sending out all my goods to Japan, moving, and uh, um well, um, I came back to Japan um, 10 days ago and, uh, um, now, um, well, uh, uh, I have to, well, set up, uh, um, my life in Japan. So, um, sorry, I don't have that, uh, uh, new project that, uh, um, I can tell you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Well, you have earned the right to take a rest and, and, and I think rest and reflect and enjoy next month's cherry blossom times. And I'm sure ideas will come. <laughs> well, thank you for your advice. <laughs> for what it's worth. Exactly. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Dr. Kunio Mikuria, for sharing a few of your insights from your decades of high level work in customs, finance, fiscal policy, technology, the politics of customs. Um, uh, it's been a real pleasure speaking with you, and I'm grateful for your time. Well, thank you very much. I enjoyed talking to you. You are very good uh, um, in extracting what uh, um, I have been thinking, so I appreciate that. Thank you very much. You've been listening to Pushing the Envelope, Life at the Cutting Edge of Customs Innovation, a podcast that profiles customs leaders, highlighting their views, ideas, and inspirations about the future of customs innovation. Join us soon for our next pencast and another insightful conversation with customs trendsetters and forward thinkers. Thank you. <laughs>